explain to us again what you're doing. Okay. I take for these disc replication and preservation systems like Jim Supercar Pro and the Cryoflex team from Europe, they to dump a Commodore 64 disc or a 128 disc correctly both sides, you need what's called a flippy modded drive. There's two types of drive that can be modified. The Panasonic certain models and the TX certain models. The Panasonics can back up four tracks and read both sides of the disc at the same time. Hmm. Since discs have to have an index hole, two index holes, one for each side in order to flip it over and read it, well, a lot of discs don't have that. So you can't just flip it over, put it in, and read the other side. Um, unless, of course, it has two index holes. So those discs that don't have two index holes, and even those that do, you can pop them in a flippy modded Panasonic or TAC and read the entire disc both sides at the same time. Basically. Interesting. Yeah, so the modification allows the disc, to, the disc drive to back up four extra tracks to get the back side of the disc, and then it kicks in the front side when it reaches <coughs> track one. So what I do with these drives is I do the flippy mod, and then I align them um, on a scope using an analog disc, and then I align the index hole sensor so that they can find the read splice, et cetera. And that's one of the things we were doing this weekend back there at the Gums table as we were looking to see how accurately they were reading the read splice, and they were pretty darn close. Jim, what would you say it was? Oh, Within a couple of bits. Off, yeah, yeah, a couple bits, and then more feet. what we were copying right. with them worked fine. Now, Jim had a stock out of the box OEM Panasonic that he purchased. We tested them side by side, and that one didn't stand a chance. <laughs> okay. So they worked out rather well, and they work with both solutions, not just the Cryoflux. I know that. When I started advertising these on Lemon and talking about them on Lemon, it was all about the Cryoflux, but now we've also got them SuperCard Pro coming, and they work great with that as well. So thank you to those of you who bought some this weekend, and if you guys want to come see them work or you want to hook yours up and check it out, I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to dump a couple discs and take a look at them together. So one left. If anybody wants it sitting up here, please just let me know. Is they that only regular price? It, yep. Yeah, it, well, actually, I'm selling them cheaper here than I am on Lemon. Because oh, I like all right. Price, so. Is that, is that, uh, that's the one in the silver bag? Correct. Can you take it out of the silver bag and show it, show it to us? So what do we, what do we put this into? It, it we put this you into a, you can put this into a PC tower. Okay, a PC tower. Out on your desktop. You can put it in an external enclosure. I have one Oh. Here. I have a dual unit here. Okay. And the other four that I brought this weekend have already sold. <laughs> <laughs> People bought up now, external enclosures rather quickly. Now, I think earlier you were saying that the, the, the people bought the dual ones fast and you only have the single ones yeah, right now? Yeah, I only have single external enclosures to bring to Convex. I had two double enclosures similar to this one. They sold and I had them. And I had a three bay that sold within two days of having oh. it. So. And what is the advantage of having a dual instead of a single? You can put two drives in to read and write, write yourself some batch files, or if you have the SuperCard Pro, you, Jim's got some setups where you can just put a copy and it'll read one disc, write the next disc. Oh, I see, I see. Uh -huh. You don't have to take anything out and swap discs, etc. So this would be kind of like a really advanced MSD SD2 disk drive? Yeah, above and beyond ah, that, yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Now keep in mind the Panasonic flippy modded drives are only for Commodore discs. Okay, nothing else requires a flippy modded. You can't use it as a PC drive anymore once it's been flippy modded because I cut Trace 33. But you, if you put it in a standard PC, it'll no longer work as a PC drive. So once it's modified, Commodore 64 and 128 discs only. And of course, discs that are compatible with, I think, the 16 and the 4 and whatnot, it'll do those as well. What about, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like the other formats, like, uh, I, I'm trying to think, Apple, Atari? Uh... The way, well, it may or may not work. I've never had a chance to test those. I, since I don't have any, so if somebody wants to test some of those and let me know if they work, that's great. You'll probably have to use Jim's solution. Uh -huh. um, the Cryoflux will only allow you to read those formats, and there's, they don't turn it into an emulated right, right, file, right. and they won't let you write it. So right. those are for preservation only. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, when they started in on the Commodore 64, they were able to, we could dump these right to a G64 format and use them in an emulator of your choice. So, and majority of them work in the emulator. Some, you know, emulators aren't perfect. Some of them still have issues, and we're reporting those. We find them to get get them enhanced. Now, uh, on that unit there, how would you connect that into like? Uh, well, it, it's what is that connection there in the? That's a floppy drive connection. That it's a floppy drive floppy connection. Drive oh, I see. I see. So here's one that some people haven't seen in a while. Okay, yeah. I see. For 
five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Uh -huh. so you just connect it to that. The other side connects to your CryoFlex board. Mm -hmm. Power, USB to your CryoFlex, and or your SuperCard Pro, or your SuperCard Pro. Yeah, and away you go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. The, so the flipping modded drives then are not primarily about it making the process faster to dump a, a two sided floppy. It's actually to get the backside read properly. Correct. Period. To read the backside properly, uh, the speed is determined by the hardware that you're using other than the drive. You'll notice that SuperCard Pro can copy a disk in 15, 20 seconds. The CryoFlux takes three and a half minutes to read oh. the disk and another minute and a half to write it. The difference there being the number of revolutions per cycle. They're doing 10 revolutions per cycle for preservation mode. And the SuperCard Pro is doing less than that so that you can get it done quick and it's doing a blind copy. CryoFlux also does some, thank you, so, oh, thank you, some preservation, or it's not preservation, um, it does some checking of the disk. I mean, it's checking, verifying tracks to make right, sure they're right. in good shape. What might work in your drive, your Commodore drive, you throw it into this PC drive and start reading it, well, with the validation, tracks might not pass. They might fail because they're looking for preservation. That track needs to be perfect in order for it to grab it. It has to recognize what's on that track. Um, all the it, checksums have to all compute. All the checks have to compute, yeah. All the checks have to clear, no matter what bank they're going to. So otherwise, you'll get a failed track. And, you know, Cleaning the disk is very important, and that's for both. I mean, that's at the drive level. Make sure your disks are clean before you put them in your drive. Uh, otherwise, make sure you're available to clean the heads in your drives quite often. So, it's a good, it's a good time. I've dumped over a thousand discs. Seven hundred and fifty of them were my own. You see a whole bunch of them here today. You know, now that I've dumped them, and we know that the copy protection can be duplicated without being removed, I'm letting them go because I'm not a collector. I just have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Are these Panasonic drives uh, like uh, readily available at uh, surplus surplus where? eBay. Electronics warehouses for the people. The only place I've ever found oh. them is eBay. Interesting. Yeah, and they range in price from, you know, twenty-five dollars untested, not working. Average price is about forty dollars shipped, and then all the way up to fifty, sixty, seventy dollars. Huh. Don't ever pay more than forty, fifty dollars for these drives. Interesting. There's people advertising them on there all the time for buy me now, ninety-nine dollars, one hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollars. Wait, <laughs> there will be two or three more next week, and they'll pop up, and you'll get one. So if anybody gets one and you want it modified, aligned, etc., you can mail them to me. I provide that service as oh. well. Um, or if I have some in stock, you can just purchase them directly from me. I also have a thread going on Lemon and on cryoflux.com, and I'm sure when CBM stuff comes up, we'll probably have some support information there uh, on the drives, and I post helpful tips and techniques and stuff in there all the time. What is your thread on Lemon for these drives? It's just uh, drives? under help and support, and it's a stick oh, it's at the top called cryoflux information. Oh, okay, got it. Yep. As soon as we start working with the super card, we're going to stick you another one there and, and work with it as well. So you can find that information right there. All the, the dump commands. Um, I've made custom batch files that make it real easy to use these things. Anybody that needs those can email me or come on Lemon and message me, and I'll be happy to send them to you. I also run an FTP where people can dump <clears throat> their Cryoflux images. We'll do the same thing for SuperCard once, once it's out. And uh, anybody that owns the hardware and is willing to contribute to the FTP has access to everything on the FTP. Right now, I think we're, I'm hosting about 1,300 images of disks. So, and we're getting more all the time, which is good. And I appreciate everybody's help that throw them up there. So the folks that had some this weekend, if you dump some disks and want to throw them up to the FTP, I'd love to have them. Appreciate it. Any other questions for John? Okay, thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Talk about an unscheduled presentation. Uh, <laughs>